Lupus is a very complicated disease that affects all parts of the body, and especially is high impact in young women of childbearing age. As we know that lupus nephritis is a severe manifestation of systemic lupus erythematosus, and it carries a um, poor prognosis. And at this time point, there's not a good way to monitor the disease of lupus nephritis. Uh, many times you need to repeat kidney biopsies. Um, our group has been studying a lot of uh, C4D, which is a biomarker on the circulating cells, as a marker for diagnosis of lupus and disease monitoring, but it has not been studied in patients with lupus nephritis. Therefore, we expand this study to um, patients with lupus nephritis, not only looking at the circulating cells, but also on the kidney tissues. This study is funded by the Lupus Foundation of America as a pilot study. We were able to recruit um, 15 patients with acute lupus nephritis and were able to collect blood and also um, examine the kidney biopsy tissue at the same time. We also compare with uh, controls, which are patients without lupus nephritis but with other renal diseases. Furthermore, we also control with another bigger group of lupus patients without kidney disease. We found the C4D on the, a part of the kidney tissue called gl glomerulus tend to be higher in the patient with lupus nephritis comparing to patients with other kidney disease but without lupus. And the differences is related to the immune complex deposition that is commonly seen in the lupus nephritis. Furthermore, we also found that there was elevated level of the C4D in the red cells and reticulocytes in patients with lupus nephritis comparing to both control groups. That means comparing to those non-lupus patients with kidney disease and also lupus patients without kidney disease. Unfortunately, this is just a cross-sectional study. We do not have prior data on the level of EC4D or RC4Ds. That's what we plan to do to get a larger grant based on the preliminary finding from this pilot grant to look cross-sectional and follow the level to see if after treatment would the level drop or if, if there's a flare going on, would the level go up? And actually, interest, another important finding is, is that we found the EC4D correlates significantly with the lupus nephritis activity based on the NIH activity index. So that's a potential role that we may not have to repeat the kidney biopsy. If we can follow this, if the level goes up, that maybe potentially there's a significant there's a evidence of flare. The next line is uh, apply this in large study. And obviously, may, it, you want to do it in a, a controlled fashion. Ideally, it'd be nice to pick it back with an ongoing pharmaceutical trial, specifically looking at lupus nephritis, where you had the kidney biopsy obtained and the blood work obtained before the treatment and also during the treatment that we can follow through the course of the therapy and see any changes. Yes, I attended a lecture. They said that, well, a lot of time when you have lupus nephritis, the horse is out of the barn. You know, inflammation already started. It's hard to stop it. So right now, it's still a challenging case of how to select the treatment, the timing of the treatment. Maybe we should even start treatment before if the patient fully manifests as lupus nephritis. So that's why there's a role for the biomarkers to, to follow them along the course. If something goes up, because we found that these markers elevated compared to those lupus patients without nephritis. Maybe that's a signal possibly showing that we got to be watch out for kidney disease. Maybe you start treating more aggressively before patients fully manifest as nephritis. But we do not know at this time until we have a study to confirm this. Mm -hmm.